This is Cross Rhythms on site at Creation Fest. I'm here with Benjamin Haycock. Hi. Hello. All right, so for the listeners, tell us a little bit about yourself. Who are you? I'm Benjamin Haycock. I am originally from Birmingham, uh, now living in the beautiful Devon. Have nice. done for most of my 20s. Uh, I'm a singer-songwriter, musician, rapper, singer, etc. Yep. Um, I do kind of like, it's difficult to put my music into a drama, yeah. but maybe like alternative folk slash yeah. rap, would you say? Yeah, yeah. Um, with a bit of kind of... I guess that would kind of describe it, wouldn't it? Maybe yeah. alt rock in there as well when I really go for it. Yeah, yeah. Have a band behind me, but yeah. Cool. Um, so, as you said, you're a musician. So how did you get into that? Do you come from a musical family or did you just kind of pick up a guitar one day and go from there? Honestly, just kind of picked up a guitar one day. Uh, I originally started playing drums. Yeah. My, my family is very musical, but more in, in the dance perspective. My mum okay. was a dancer. My dad loved really good music and my mum did. Um, but they were dancers. They danced yeah. anywhere. Uh, oh, right. Whereas I kind of picked up an instrument for the first time now of the three of us and and I played drums initially and started rapping a bit yep. while playing drums, which was an interesting concoction. Uh, and then picked up a guitar when I was about 14, 15. Um, and actually only later discovered I had a bit of a voice as well okay. yeah, when yeah. I was about 17, 18. Until then, I actually didn't think that I could sing. Okay. So I would, well, like most rappers, you, you just fill the, the hook with something yes. else. So you'd create a song, I'd rap over the, the section, have a yep. really cool guitar piece or whatever, um, and then get someone else to sing the choruses. So it was a really, really yeah. good like, revelation for me, I guess. Nice, yeah, yeah. When I, when I discovered the fact I had a bit of a voice. Ah, cool. Yeah. Um, so you're also a Christian, and we're here at a Christian event. Uh, tell us a little bit about your faith journey then. Yeah, I, so I grew up in a Christian home. Mom and dad was a Christian. Uh, we've actually been to Creation Fest nice. since I was younger. So I was oh, wow. here when it used yeah. to be in Wollacombe. Okay. Um, so the, so the very energy. beginning days, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Phil Wickham was actually headlining, I remember. Oh, wow, nice. um, I played football with Phil Wickham when I was really young. It was, it was so <laughs> down to earth. Um, and, and yeah, I've, I've always been a Christian. Grew up in uh, the vineyard, went mm. to a gospel church for a bit when I was playing football on Sundays, which meant I couldn't go to the morning yeah. services. So I've kind of grew up, I've had a lot of testing times. Anyone who kind of knows my music yeah. knows a bit of what I've been through. Um, that probably feeds more into following questions. But yeah, mm. I've, I've been through a lot and had my faith very much challenged. But yeah. it's probably been the one thing that's that's been cost consistent throughout yeah. all this period it's the one constant that's kept me going and, and ultimately jesus has has obviously really helped me through all these tribulations yeah um, definitely. so so my faith has has, has definitely uh, been steadfast in, in everything that i do um i don't do specifically christian music mm. um i am very much in a singer songwriter yeah. bracket uh, and and speak about a lot of topics but all of the time it's through the lens of, mm. of what would jesus do Cool. Um, so does your faith then kind of impact your music in any way? Or are you fully like kind of, you just happen to be a Christian and do secular music? I think that was maybe the case initially and probably still is to a, a large degree. But look, my last kind of four or five songs yeah. have been about homelessness. Yep. About uh, grief that exists within postcodes within Britain, postcode yeah, yeah. wars, etc. That was my last song called yeah. Postcode Grief. Um, uh, the other song, let me just think of my, my last few songs. You'd probably know more than me at this stage. Yeah, People's War, yep. which is about refugees and people um, that are really struggling in war-torn areas across the mm. world. You kind of get in a bit of a theme. Yeah. So e everything uh, is within the, the, the confines, the last few songs at least, of, of social commentary yeah. or, or my perspective on things. Not really political. Mm. It's just kind of me looking at it from a songwriter's perspective, yeah. um, writing a song about it, because ultimately I, I find it difficult to... To be so invested in in, yeah. in people's lives and the stories that people people tell and, and have and yeah. not write about it. So no, it within sense. that, yeah. it's obviously uh, through a Christian capacity as well, of course, oh, because ultimately cool. all those situations, if you have Jesus at the, the heart of it, yeah. transcends the political and the and the yeah. debates and the rest of it. Um, so talking on that kind of that front, one of your songs for some nature was done in collaboration. Yes, the Tree Council. Tell us a bit about that and how that came to be. Yeah, so uh, Tree Council commissioned me initially to do a song for them, which was Force for Nature. Uh, that was the first commission that I, I got, okay. uh, which was super cool. I, I created a music video and a song. And honestly, the project with them has gone from strength to strength. Mm -hmm. I now do a lot of freelance work for them across the country, nice. working in schools, doing music, but also non-music. I'm also yeah. a youth worker, have yeah. been for years. Um, I project manage an autistic charity, so working with young people has been on my heart so yeah. the fact I get to collaborate the two and in a couple of years three years now I believe it's yeah. been um, we co-developed this installation mm. which utilises 
uh, the voices of young people, which tries yeah, yeah. to. So we go to these schools, we do workshops, we do assemblies, um, and we record these children's voices, and then we've we've put those into a soundscape that I've created. Yeah and an installation with technology and lights and a tree in the middle um, that you can play music through the natural world with. It's yeah. really, really cool. Um, and we've honestly, it's gone from strength to strength. This is a project started about a year and a half ago. Yeah. We started off at Birmingham Botanic Gardens. We went to the NEC. Uh, we did uh, Hampton Court Palace, National History nice. Museum. And in December of, of last year, we got invited <laughs> to 10 Downing Street. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah. And not just the exhibition, but I got to actually perform in front of uh, the Prime Minister's wife and yeah. the workshop, which was which was absolutely wonderful. So, yeah, that, that project has been super interesting. Yeah. It's got me in a lot of uh, really exciting rooms that I'd never yeah. think I would be I in. I can imagine. Um, not, not even in a musical capacity, actually, just in, in terms of whether it's politics or the environmental sphere or charities in general, yeah. NGOs. It's It's been a really interesting project that's, that's incredibly... Um, incredibly worthwhile and, and something that's definitely on my heart. Nice. Um, so you were talking about, um, you mentioned one of your latest songs, Postcode Grief. Mm. Can you tell us a bit about the story behind that one? For sure. So po- Postcode Grief is is a song that a lot of the song I actually wrote when I was in that area. Okay. I just didn't feel like it was a time to release it, whether it be musically mm. or because I didn't have what I needed to for the song or maybe yeah. wasn't in a place to release it yeah. um, but after I released those songs about homelessness and about mm. I, I, I felt like I needed to do one a bit more closer to home yeah. that I kind of went through in some ways I was in an area um, I'm from Erdington in Birmingham mm. um, which is a very multicultural area very, very kind of cosmopolitan area it's, it's kind of in between suburbia and inner city yep. um, I was more on the inner city side bordering Aston and Witten um, and those areas specifically included Erdington and surrounding regions of North Birmingham but also this kind of transcends that period and actually yeah. uh, Moses brother's in the back just saying hello to them <laughs> it's kind of distracted then <laughs> looking so cool brother as always <laughs> nice. but thank you bro but yeah so the the song stemmed from those areas yeah. I've had friends end up in prison I've, I've had okay. friends that uh, were stabbed when I was really young, I was in a situation where I could have gone down that pathway. Yeah. When I was, not to go into the story properly, but when I was uh, 12, 13, I was uh, involved through rap, through the things I was into at the time, mm. into into that kind of world. Okay. I was, and, and essentially, without going into the, the full story of things, I ended up with a knife up to my throat. Oh, okay, in wow. The, yeah. In the middle of the night, um, people threatening my family, kind of getting chased out of school, and... And within that world where, you know, weapons are used yeah. and, and and all of it is so fictitious. All of it is about a postcode. All of it is about a territory. Yeah. All of it is about the clique that you're in. Mm. Um, and over the last kind of five or six years, several years now that I've been in Devon and haven't been in the, those areas, yeah. um, I've I've witnessed what's happened and it's, it's kind of mm. continued and, and the amount of people that get stabbed on a daily yeah. basis. I was reading something last night, a young guy got stabbed in, in Stoke last night and it was just, yeah. it, it just doesn't stop and it's a cyclical thing that yeah. is disgusting and yeah, the, the, the song is essentially about community. It's about the fact that those units of communities should bind together hmm. and create unity create community as opposed to fighting factional warfare almost yeah um because it really is over a council say that the government yeah government created a postcode that the government yeah. created as opposed to something where you know it's it's their family or the bloodline or whatever it may be it's 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 damning and it's it's real yeah. And and that's what the song's about. It's a social commentary song, but it also mm. uh, relays a bit of my own experience as well. And like I said, I've had friends um, who have passed away. I've had friends yeah. who have been in intensive care. I've had friends who have ended up in prison now. So wow. yeah, yeah. it's 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 a powerful song for me, and it's it's actually the only song I've released this year. And I think it's mm. it's 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 apt to be that way. I'm happy for okay. you to just sit there. For yeah, a bit, you know. Cool. Well, thank you for standing here with me. Of course, of course. Absolute pleasure, my friend.